Santosh and uh, Rakesh, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Santosh. So I guess Rakesh is also ready. Fine. Yes, Sajid. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, hi Aditya, uh, my name is Aditesh. So, uh, Aditya, tell me about yourself and your journey in the field of data analytics. Sure. Uh, so, hi, uh, I am Aditya and uh, I am a data analytics professional. I have uh, one year of experience. And in my previous work experience, uh, I have uh, managed uh, tasks related to data integration, data transformation, data visualization. Uh, and uh, talking about my technical uh, skills, uh, that includes SQL, Power BI, uh, and understanding of Azure related uh, data technologies, cloud services, and understanding of Python. And apart from this, I'm also skilled in translating complex business requirements into actionable insights and uh, working on data driven innovation. Thank you. All right. So, um, Aditya, uh, what do you consider to be your greatest strength as data analyst? and how it contribute your effectiveness in this role. So uh, uh, from the strength perspective, sometimes uh, what I have seen that uh, people uh, in, in the data analyst focus more was the technical uh, side. I mean, learning the uh, more technical tools and uh, our machine learning kind of things. But as the thing is, uh, when we say data analyst, there is also a role of understanding of business of different industries how we can uh, understand different metrics in uh, different industries. Like, uh, for example, uh, in case of a sales kind of uh, team, we have to uh, check the uh, overall sales, how much a, 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 a sales person can able to sell the product. But in, in case of, uh, for example, banking industry, things are different. They are not selling anything. They are even uh, crediting the money into your account. And that's how they are getting the money. I mean, that's how they are improving their uh, overall uh, revenue. So uh, uh, having understanding of different industry and uh, according to the business logic, uh, creating, uh, working on that uh, analytics part is something I feel I have uh, in knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, fair enough again. Aditya, uh, how you handle feedback or constructive criticism, you can say, about your work? How I, uh, sir, can you repeat? Yeah, constructive criticism. Okay, uh, uh, like uh, there are many cases in my teams where, you know, sometimes there can be a uh, uh, conflict of interest, like what, uh, what kind of uh, charts we have to use. Uh, you know? mm -hmm. For example, uh, we have a scenario where someone is saying that we have to use this chart and I'm saying that we can use a line cluster chart. So uh, definitely we have to uh, connect up on, on a single note. And then finally analyze that uh, our requirement is that we can, we have to, the business requirement is that uh, this is needs to be analyzed or this needs to be in uh, insights on the dashboard. So according to the uh, connecting and, and the past experience, we uh, go on the common ground and settle all this. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, can you walk me through a challenging project you have worked on in the past and how you contributed uh, it in its success? Can you please give some few, you know, insights on that? Uh, okay, so uh, like uh, talking about challenges in Power BI. So yeah, uh, for example, uh, uh, recently there was a thing like, uh, uh, as we know, there are two kind of connecting sources in Power BI. And we have to, uh, this is the first time I have to work on a direct query kind of uh, project. And there, uh, after like doing all these stuffs and we have to share the report uh, with other people's so the thing is, uh, the, the data, uh, they are able to access the data mm -hmm. and send them the uh, user report to them. They are not able to access the data in that thing. So, uh, I mean, uh, if they are able to see the uh, visualization, but not the proper data set they are able to focus on. So uh, the issue which uh, later I have found out that it's due to some kind of a Microsoft related authentication configuration, which generally works in the back end. So the account that they are using, I mean, the one of the user uh, using that account is kind of old. Mm -hmm. So that's why they are getting some uh, issues in configuration and that's why they are not able to access the data. And from that time, I have uh, added one thing uh, in my, uh, you know, overall project working scenario that uh, whenever we are uh, sharing the report, 
we will use a dummy account so that mm -hmm. uh, we will do the testing part on that and we will understand that if there is any issue when we are sharing our report to end user so this is how i have work on that oh nice so uh, how do you measure a long term impact on your data driven recommendation or initiatives uh, sorry uh, my question is how do you measure the long term impact on your data driven recommendations or initiatives long term impact uh, so uh, there are not so many uh, decision kind of things which i have uh so that i will take some kind of decision on that basis but yeah generally we got the document the pr document with the scrum document from the stakeholders and they have mentioned that uh, we are uh, measuring we are uh, getting insight this insight for this purpose like uh, we are measuring this uh, potential predictive analysis so that we can uh, find out our next potential customers or next potential uh, you know uh, end user uh, for our revenue growth so they already we, we have already some uh, kind of a description that we are using this uh, logic so that we can uh, focus on this uh, key metric so that it will help in uh, cost saving or it will help in uh, revenue optimization all right all right so do you think that it is sort is one of the key factor while using your analysis part sorry swot yeah i have i have heard that swot uh, kind of thing but i have not encountered that in my working area all right no no sure so uh, how how will you manage you know the address bias or inaccuracies in uh, data sources especially when you are dealing it with large or diverse data sets so yeah uh, whenever we got that uh, like uh, raw data that is in poor condition we have to do some kind of uh, feature rendering adding some new rows and columns uh, doing some transformations uh, for example uh, uh, we have to uh, maintain the data types that if some data types in a string format uh, for example if column is a date and uh, data type is string so we have to correct the data types we have to also sometimes create a uh, new columns and measures so for example uh, uh, in our data we have given a date of birth of our end user so that is not of uh, any use uh, at present according to it said we have to find out uh, what is the current age uh, of our you know uh, the user so we have to create a new column based off uh, of the date of birth apart from this there are so many uh, things like trimming the uh, blank spaces have uh, treating the null values uh, by finding and replacing method so these are the kind of uh, data transformation things uh, we have to take handle to maintain the accuracy and consistency all right uh, my last question uh, given a data set with missing uh, values outliers uh, and noise Uh, walk me through your approach of to pre-processing and uh, feature engineering for uh, to prepare it uh, for analysis. Uh, so yeah, uh, like uh, it totally depends upon the you know column how we have to handle the missing values. It may be like uh, for example, if a column is uh, having a product price, then we can do the you know take uh, an average of value. but for example if, if there is a, a new column which have a sales value and it may be have a null values as a uh, as a uh, issue so there we cannot uh, do any kind of uh, fill and replace or something like that we have to replace it to with the null value sorry with the zero value because mm -hmm. if this column maintains the accuracy in complete so i am done from my side all right so over to uh, santosh and rakesh so yeah they will be going with your technical round so yeah 